Should you have an upper entrance on your beehive over winter and is it bad for your bees? That's the question I am addressing in this YouTube video. I'm going to go through the pros and cons to an upper entrance, share with you some research about condensation, humidity, and ventilation within the beehive so that you can decide what would be best for you and your bees. The benefits to this upper entrance, there, there's two main ones. One is ventilation and the other one is an additional way for the bees to enter and exit the hive. The reason why you want this extra entrance is because a lot of bees die over the winter time and this can block the lower entrance. You really want bees to be able to come and go from the hive so that they can go on their cleansing flight. With just the lower entrance, not only can that get blocked, but it might be colder down within the hive so bees might not be able to go down there. The other reason for the outer entrance is for ventilation. So this gives bees, this gives the hive uh, a spot for that warm air that the cluster is producing to chimney up and out of the hive. And because of that respiration from the bees, there can be a lot of humidity and that can now exit the hive. And again, if that lower entrance is blocked because of a lot of dead bees, then that is an additional way for oxygen to get into the hive so that the bees still have airflow. Although there are benefits to this upper entrance, there are downsides to it. And a big one being that you now have this hole in the top of your beehive where cold air can get in. And you do have a lower entrance where also cold air can get in, but hot air rises allow for a lot more heat to be lost from the hive. Also, the cluster starts at the bottom of the hive, but they make their way up to the top of the hive as they eat through the honey storage. By the time they are at the top of the hive, it's also going to be later on in the winter, closer to the time that the queen is going to start laying and there's going to be brood that needs to be kept very warm. The bees can still produce enough heat to keep the brood and the cluster warm, but it will require more energy from the bees, which could potentially cause them to have to eat more honey produce more respiration, which in turn produces more vapor, which causes more condensation in the hive. Uh, this upper entrance can also be a way that moisture can get in the hive if you have some really windy, rainy days. Now onto some research findings. Inside the hive, honeybees prefer a roughly 75% relative humidity. According to Krauss from a study he did in 1997, without moisture in the hive during winter, a honeybee colony would die of starvation. Bees need water to dilute honey for intake through their proboscis and all of their phases of digestion. When the queen starts laying again in midwinter, water is critical for producing the brood food. And so a lot of beekeepers go through all of this effort to keep the hive dry when in fact you do want moisture within the hive and it is okay for moisture to be along the walls of the hive, you just don't want it building up on the cover and dripping down onto the hive. Now there was another study done that found that the important role of the insulation is the avoiding of excessive moisture inside the hive. And when you put insulation around your hive, there's actually a lot less condensation that forms. One good way to reduce the amount of moisture in the hive is to decrease the amount of respiration that the bees are creating. The lowest metabolic rate for a honeybee occurs in a chill coma, which is somewhere around 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. In this one study in 1981, operators of indoor wintering facilities set the thermostat around 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Every bee in the cluster can remain at rest and still avoid chill coma, provided the insulating shell maximizes its density. CO2 levels rise and oxygen declines inducing a quiet stillness that puts the colony into a state of semi-hibernation while broodless in winter. Now from another study, they state that it is widely known that the lower the metabolic rate of wintering bees is associated with food consumption, as well as the temperature of the cluster. The deeper the bees go into this hibernation status or being dormant, the less they are exhausting themselves and the more successful they are at overwintering. In this study, they put water collection containers to collect condensation at the top, sides, and bottom of the hive, and found that in an insulated hive, nearly all the water condensed on the sides and bottom, and very little at the top. All right, so those are the pros and cons to an upper entrance. A lot of beekeepers use them successfully. A lot of beekeepers don't use them successfully. 
If you are concerned about a lot of moisture being in your hive, excessive moisture, then you might want to give it a shot. If you're concerned about your bees being too cold and the cluster getting too cold, then maybe don't do it and have the screened bottom as that extra source of ventilation. The purpose of this video is to have this as a platform for people to share information, comments, questions. So I would love it if you could share what you do for your beehives, the area that you live in, the weather that you have. Check, look, skim through the comments, see if there are questions that maybe you would be able to answer and let's all help each other help our bees through the winter. And so finally, there's five core areas that you wanna be concerned about when it comes to preparing your hive for the winter that I wanna go through real fast. And one is you just wanna make sure that there's ventilation. An upper entrance, lower entrance, screened bottom. There are a few ways to do it. Either way, you wanna make sure there is that lower entrance and you want an additional way for the hive to get ventilation just in case that lower entrance is totally blocked off. There are currently five turkeys walking around my yard about 30 feet from me and two turkeys about 20 feet behind me that wouldn't stop squawking so I just threw a small coconut at it and they ran away. Anywho, you also want to consider moisture and have something to absorb excess moisture in your hive. Some people do it with a quilt box under the lid. Some people do it with their candy or dry white sugar. Some people put a moisture board under the lid. You also want to help your bees deal with the cold. You want to put some kind of insulation under your lid. You want to give them a windbreak and ideally you would allow them to have the sun hitting them on the south side. And in some areas where it's getting really cold, you may want to wrap your hives. You're also going to want to give the bees ample food. That's going to be the honey inside the beehive plus a feed over your uppermost box. This could be dry white sugar or a candy that you make. And you're going to want to check on this to make sure that the bees aren't starving. You also want to reconfigure your hive. The cluster of bees should be in the lower box with frames of food on either side and then frames of honey up above that. You're going to want to put a mouse guard over the entrance to reduce it. You're going to want to have an inner cover up above your uppermost box plus your outer cover that is strong. You want your equipment to have no cracks and holes in it. You want the queen excluder off of your beehive, no matter if you have a flow hive or not. And then of course, another option is to get a heated bottom board. I have a link to someone that sells them on the mainland in the United States. And that is, they are electric. And he says they heat up the hive, can heat up the hive up to 70 degrees. Now I have never used these. I don't know any beekeepers personally that have used them. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.